If you were looking to buy a new CPU in 2022, then you may be confused by all the naming that's out there, especially if we look at Intel's 12th generation, for example, they'll have even on the same model, an i5-12400, and then an i5-12400F. And if we look at the i7, for example, they've got an i7-12700, 12700K, and then a 12700F and KF. So there's four different models for that same 12700. But what do these all mean? Well, essentially the F means that you don't get the onboard iGPU. But if you go with any other model that doesn't have an F, say for instance, an i7-12700 or a 12700K like we have here, you will get the onboard iGPU. Now for me personally, I absolutely have to have the onboard iGPU in 2022. And in today's video, I'm gonna go over the reasons why I need this and for instance, if you are looking to buy a new 12th gen CPU from Intel, then you may want to get the iGPU. Even though I do recommend the F CPUs for people who are just solely gaming, though I think if you wanna do more with your whole setup, especially now, or maybe in the future when it comes to say streaming or even recording videos, or of course, creating content in 4K video editing software, then the UHD graphics on board the Intel 12th gen CPUs are very powerful. And in today's video, I'm gonna go over all the benefits that I get from using the onboard graphics, even though I have a dedicated graphics card in my computer, that is an RTX 38. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. Today's video is sponsored by Intel. So let's go over the first and my personal biggest benefit that's to be gained by having that iGPU switched on. Now, in order to turn this on, you need to go into the BIOS and look for the option that says iGPU multi-monitor support. Depending on the BIOS, this may be in a different location as to certain other BIOSes, but it should be the same setting. And when you find it, you turn this on, and then you should see if you go to Windows in Device Manager, you should have the Ultra HD graphics showing there. In this case, we've got the i5-12400, that will be the UHD 730. And then in the case of the i7, 12700K, that will be the UHD 770. Though once you have this enabled, you'll then be able to push out display options from a USB-C hub or a Thunderbolt dock. And this can be connected via your computer via the Thunderbolt or USB Type-C port. And so how I utilize this is since I can't be putting a camera behind my monitors here at Tech yes City's Japan studio because there's not enough room, I then move my camera and essentially create a whole new setup on the desk when I want to live stream. And I'm able to do this because I'm then able to extend basically a whole nother computer from my computer from a USB Type-C hub. And so I'm allowed to connect another two monitors via that hub, which then goes through the iGPU to give me display outs. On top of that, I've then got the extension on three USB hubs, which I can then use for my camera to plug into the capture card and then plug into that hub, as well as a new mouse and keyboard to use over at this other location. I also gain the option, of course, after I'm finished recording videos to easily use my memory card that's inserted on that Type-C hub as well. Though if I didn't have the iGPU, I'd then have to run very long extension cables from my main rig via the graphics card and also the USB extension cables. It would just be an absolute mess in terms of cable clutter if I didn't have that dock. But let's move on now to the second benefit to be gained with the Intel iGPU, and that is the quick sync compatibility. Essentially what this will do is it will use the iGPU instead of the CPU, or of course, instead of your RTX 3080, which is the GPU that we're using in the testing here today, and it will allow you to speed up your computer, especially when it comes to using Premiere Pro for live footage scrubbing, as well as helping with final render times, and also for taking the load off the GPU if that's getting maxed in certain portions of your rendering process. Though what I'll show you up on the screen here is some benchmarks that we did with the Puget Bench on the iGPU turned off versus on. And what we can see here is when we disable that iGPU, you're gonna be emulating essentially an i5-12400F, or in the case of the i7, an i7-12700KF. And what you'll see here is that you do gain more performance by turning on your iGPU. And in terms of the compatibility, it should be enabled by default with Premiere Pro. However, one thing that you will gain here is also compatibility when it comes to extra codecs that are available for decoding, especially when it comes to 10-bit. 
which some of these extra options will open up only to QuickSync, even versus an RTX 3000 series graphics card. Also, if you're editing in DaVinci Resolve, there are extra options to be extracted. So that's why a lot of the times people will transcode their videos to these different file formats in order to make their editing process a lot more seamless or a lot less laggy, AKA a lot less stuttering. Though even though I don't transcode, I personally notice when I've got the iGPU enabled, it's a better live experience when it comes to editing videos with that quick sync enabled. But now it's time to move on to the third benefit and probably one of the biggest reasons that you guys came here and that is the gaming benchmarks when it comes to using quick sync as a streaming encoder versus say Nvidia's NVENC or the X264, AKA CPU encoding. And here's where I set out with four different benchmarks while I was playing three different games. The first of those being Fortnite at epic settings. Here's where I tested it at Tilted Towers. And here's where QuickSync was beating out the other two encoding options Though one thing you'll take away is you definitely don't want to be using your CPU only when it comes to an i5-12400. So you'll definitely want to have either QuickSync or NVENC enabled, but it was good to see QuickSync was getting the closest to just raw gaming with no streaming software on at all. However, moving on to the i7-12700K, this was a little bit of a different story here for Fortnite where you do get the efficiency cores and you do get a lot more CPU grunt when it comes to the CPU itself. And so what we saw here was the X264 software encoding actually did an okay job. However, it still followed the results of the i5-12400 quite closely, and that QuickSync was giving you the fastest frames out of all the three encoding options when it came to streaming. Then moving on to Apex Legends, here's where I tested everything apples to apples doing the same benchmarks on all four different runs with these different encoding options versus not having it on. And what we saw here was QuickSync again was winning the race in terms of versus NVENC and also versus CPU only. However, the margin wasn't as big as Fortnite in my opinion, and that's because the game itself is extremely well optimized. But it is good to see that if you've got this iGPU option and you wanna stream or even record gameplay footage and you want the best FPS while you're doing that, then you can enable QuickSync. And also while I was at it, I decided to test the codec quality settings because some of you guys may be worried is QuickSync inferior to NVENC or is it better than CPU software encoding and I'll throw up a side by side by side comparison here of the three different options at a static location that I was testing at with two different scenarios. This was all done at 6,000 kilobits per second. This was at 1080p 60fps. These are the settings that Twitch recommended I used. So I just followed that since if people are getting into streaming, it's probably gonna be the settings that Twitch recommends them as well. Though the final game that we had here was Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And just like Fortnite, the biggest difference was to be seen actually on the i5-12400 where the i7-12700K, again, just like Fortnite, had more grunt and horsepower available on the CPU level, so that didn't really affect the results as much as the i5-12400, which did see a lower FPS setting when you were using the CPU only encoding. So I definitely recommend having either quick sync or NVENC enabled, but again, if you want the best FPS while you're streaming, then definitely go for the quick sync option. Now, in terms of knowing if quick sync is working or not, you can use up an overlay tool. In this case, we used MSI Afterburner while we we're benchmarking, and you can see if you've got two GPU options enabled, the second will be the Ultra HD graphics. And in this case, when we were using the quick sync with the streaming software, we see that the iGPU was being loaded up as well as when we were doing the Premiere Pro benchmarks, it was the same story. We could see that the iGPU was taking the load off the GPU and the CPU to whatever task we were using. So essentially it was free performance available that I do recommend using. And especially in this case, it's only an extra 15 to $30 if you're in the US. If you're in Australia, it can be around an extra 30 to 40 Aussie dollars. And in my opinion, it's an absolute must have if you're thinking about doing anything outside of just raw gaming. So if you're into content creation, if you're into editing videos, or even if you want to dabble in that stuff in the future and you want to have a powerful tool like QuickSync available, then it is worth getting in my opinion. Then now it's time to move over to the fourth and final benefit, and that is you have an extra display out available. So in other words, in the future, say for instance, you're having problems with your computer, you can always diagnose if the problem is the graphics card itself by simply taking it out and then using the iGPU. And if you get a display out and your computer's running fine after that, 
and then you plug your graphics card in and it's still a black signal from the graphics card after you've of course reset your settings, then it may be that your graphics card has dropped off and it might be time to go get a new graphics card, but you wouldn't be able to diagnose that if you didn't have an iGPU available or of course another PC. But I'm guessing a lot of people don't have a second PC available to quickly diagnose these problems. So it's always handy to have that backup graphics card available. Or of course, if you're in the process of upgrading your GPU and you've sold that graphics card and getting by on an iGPU will mean the difference between using a computer or not using a computer for a couple of days. And with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. And also if you've already got the iGPU on your CPU, then perhaps you can get some extra value out of it that you never thought you previously had, as it is a very powerful tool, one that I've learned to appreciate over the years and utilize more and more. And so when Intel approached us and said, hey, do you wanna take a look at this? I said, gladly, because I get so much out of an iGPU than I ever had in the past. So QuickSync, very powerful tool. I do recommend it. But let us know in the comments section below what you think. Love reading your thoughts and opinions, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Joe King. And they ask question of the day. Why didn't you use your ultrasonic cleaner? And so in Australia, I have an ultrasonic cleaner. I love using it, especially on really filthy parts. But coming over to Japan, I noticed, especially after I did the first parts hunt here in Japan, that there wasn't really any filthy, filthy products that were anywhere to be found. And so even after being here for a couple of months now, I'm noticing that there's still no really dirty products. So I've been like wanting to have a reason to try and get an ultrasonic cleaner, but there hasn't been any reason to get one here because it looks like either everyone takes really good care of their stuff or they just throw away the really dirty things before it can even hit the shelves or even be sold to someone like me who's looking for an extreme bargain and looking to get their hands dirty, or in the case of the ultrasonic cleaner, looking to get the ultrasonic cleaner's hands dirty on my behalf and get the job done and restore those parts. But unfortunately it just hasn't happened yet, so I'm still on the lookout. Hopefully when you see an ultrasonic cleaner in Japan, then you'll know that I found some really filthy parts. But until that day, I just don't see the reason to purchase one, I guess. My train of thought is minimalist a little bit, which is weird, because you probably see a lot of non-minimalist stuff here on the channel, <laughs> especially when it comes to used parts and binge buying that stuff. Anyhow guys, I'll catch you in the next video very soon. And if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll see you next time. Peace out for now, bye. Taking me back to the start